Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see everybody here. Um, Services Committee meeting of this date at this hour, and I'd like to welcome alternate director uh, uh, Lovelace. It's very nice to see you, and thank you, sir. Good morning. We have quorum, so I have an agenda in front of me, which I have uh, an item that I would like to uh, add to it on the new business called Competitions CRD General Managers Chris Nielsen for. Responsibilities of boards and so on, and I think uh, for myself, the year, this first six months of this year have been a very um, enlightening and meaningful um, time. The the matter of board governance and the responsibilities that go with it keep driven home, being driven home, and I think there is a good deal of opportunity to to better ourselves and to reflect a lot more on this business of the we is us, uh, the CRD representing its constituents and being part of and reflecting and being a resource to those municipalities out there. That is our strength. Our, on, our strength is the on the street strength. The who we are and how we are perceived and what we do for our communities, vitally important that we realize and continue to recognize it's the on-the-street stuff. That is our antidote. That is our answer to so much. So again, renewed through, through holidays. I trust everybody's well and enjoyed their similar joy of the summer. And that concludes my remarks. I have no presentations and delegations. Under item four, and item five, I would like to invite staff to speak to please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a report that is before you because the uh, signing authority is outside of any staff signing authority. This was an item that uh, we first talked to the board uh, about during our budget process. Um, the, uh, the current website is uh, about six years old now, and in, in terms of its uh, usefulness has been outstripped by community expectations of what a website should do. It um, has about 48,000 pages of uh, information on the website and a very difficult time for people to sort out how to access that information and the current trend, whether it's in larger municipalities or shorter municipalities, is to try and reduce that to a more manageable um, level for the, the public in those 15,000 pages. So uh, we have, um, I think, a really exciting project. It's clearly the, uh, the key, has emerged as the key way that the public wants to receive information. And we see a great opportunity in this project to be able to convert not only a way of providing information to the public, but receiving information and receiving input. 
Um, so it's a, it's a very, uh, I think, timely project for us in many respects. And uh, we're quite excited about it and feel we have a very good contractor who's got um, the experience and the knowledge to be able to uh, really change the way, we, the face of the CRD and the, the, the way we deal with things electronically. We believe in terms of other projects of this size and nature that we've seen with other local governments, we have a very competitive price uh, from the contractor and it's uh, within the budget amount that uh, was approved by the board earlier this year. We're recommending uh, the award of the contract. And if there's any questions, these two lovely people who are over here are way more knowledgeable about, about um, multimedia and uh, uh, web design than I am. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Around the table, discussions, interest? I have a few questions myself. Uh, Chair, please. Uh, well, I've sort of gotten used to the old, the old one. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, <laughs> although I have to admit it, 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 does take, it has taken a little work at times. Um, what what are we going to achieve with the new site that we we aren't doing now? What are the what are the main benefits that will be added? Staff, please. Uh, Chair Young, thank you. I think um, none of us are satisfied with what we call navigation or access of information around the site. I think we need to both through governance in terms of how how we make sure that the information gets up there and is current and a better architecture in terms of. Um, finding stuff on the site, making it you know, easier to access for the public with a lot of um, empirical feedback now around uh, people finding it difficult to access, people finding it to find the, to look for the information that they're looking for. I really would speak to Kelly's point around the, the change in, in what's happening uh, in terms of people really, really saying to us, um, I want to give you feedback. I don't often have time in my busy lives to attend public hearings or public meetings, although we do need to continue to do those things. We need a, a, a very many different strategies around all those things, but what we are increasingly hearing from people is let me give you information, let me give you feedback when it works for me in my life. That might be at 3 in the morning, it might be at 5 at night, it might be at 2 in the afternoon. So really, from my point of view, that more than anything else, the website update is, is for us to both deliver information in a better way and to do better engagement with our communities and with citizens around uh, them telling us what's important to them. You'll see increasingly now uh, when we ask for feedback on major projects like the, the Integrated Solid Waste Management Plan that we're actually cutting the amount of money that we're spending on advertising and actually cutting those ads down and saying please give us that feedback at the website. That's increasingly the way that we're, that we're taking information and feedback, whether that's by survey or, or other. Um, I recognize it's a, it is a significant amount of money. This contract award is, is certainly the lowest of the, of the ones that we've received, and yet many of you feel a competent contractor. Um, but I, I'm hopeful that both from an engagement point of view uh, and from an information point of view, that those are, those are clear and tangible benefits that, that everyone uh, sees with the project. Uh, I'm just wondering if it's possible to uh, estimate A, how long it will take to get us to where we want to be, and B, once we're there, how long will it be <laughs> useful to us before we have to do this again? Um, I'm going to say, I think, about a year. Yeah, a year from now, from contract award. And I'm going to say that I hope that we're not uh, before this group again uh, for six or seven years. Uh, I mean, the technology is, everything that happens with technology is difficult to, to anticipate, but we hope to build it in a way and have it in a way that we're not back before this group uh, anytime very quickly. And, and in fact, we, the most significant work around this website was done in 1996. Um, a lot, there's been updates and things since then. I think all of you will also be dealing with one of the one of the challenges that we have as an organization, as many organizations has, that our answer to everything has been to put it on the website without really thinking about how to find it or where it's stored or, or how to make that easy. And we certainly hope to, to do a much better job of that uh, moving forward and, and feel like we have a license from the community that that's, that's their expectation. Thank you. I'll myself, please. Um, 
This used to be my trade. So I have uh, a particular um, interest in the mobilization of facts to improve decision making. That's my definition of information. Fact presenting and listing factual materials is not very helpful <clears throat> unless it gets used, unless it's a library of, 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 of record. And so my, my questions hinge on, on two things. One, or three things, pardon me. What are the deliverables and how will we measure success? Two, who are the users that you are, what are the lenses that you are going to be shaping this, this uh, format and accessibility for? And then three, what is the horsepower and the engines driving this so that the user's experience is one that is timely and consistent with today's expectations? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to your first question, success matrix certainly can be captured in terms of um, people coming to the website, how long they're there, how easily they find the information. Um, there are many different audiences that we're looking for, um, and, and that's one of the really important discussions that we've had uh, with, the senior, with the general managers and with the CLT team, is there's, there's two very big um, views of the, of the uh, regional district in terms of being both a service provider and a governance and oversight and the working together partnership piece and so we need to capture both of those and, and have both of those lenses but but clearly residents and their ability to access information on services to go to regional parks to find out how to do that potentially to find out what buses bus services get you to regional parks that kind of integration um, is, is vitally important and both through our website and through social media, we're tracking both the kind of information, the number of uh, users and hits that we're getting around that, and we can drive those numbers over time and, and track those numbers over time, and we certainly have an ability uh, to do that. In terms of the, the horsepower question, um, I think it is, it is now the most important undertaking for your corporate communications. Department, Kaylee, coming on board. We now very much from a governance point of view are taking responsibility for all those pages, for making decisions around what's on the top pages of the site, what's the most interesting and topical information at the moment, what site can we get, what information can we get off the site. Um, so it, from a staff point of view, we really have pulled together resources and said, um, this is important if people are telling us this is how they're going to access information and clearly around decision making as well, increasingly explaining process around how decisions are made uh, and that information being there as well, that's, that's sort of the, the theoretical, if I could, behind what we're trying to do. Okay. If, if I can just add that to that, if, um, we, uh, Kaylee has spent the first four or five months of this year since the budget approval uh, doing that sort of work in the organization and we actually have a document that the web steering committee uh, has authorized or approved internally that would lay out um, all of the answers to your first two questions for sure. Uh, what are the, the deliverables? How are we going to manage that? How are we going to uh, understand success? What are the focus areas that we need to be in? We can certainly circulate uh, that document for those that, who are interested in it. Um, and. And the other thing we've done that Andy, Andy alluded to, but uh, that you may be interested in, is we uh, have a fairly, in, in terms of the market, we have a fairly slim group that is sort of managing the, the website. And Kaylee's role, uh, you've been with us for how long? A year. <laughs> um, she was uh, brought in but with a uh, vacancy that was created in corporate communications and we uh, decided to move uh, significantly in corporate communications out of the print area that would be more traditional in the uh, communication side and bring someone on with that specialty. So her role is not a new one. In the, it's a new one in the organization, but it's not an additional body. And over the last uh, six months or so, we've also brought someone out of our IT department who was focusing on the, uh, the web as well and brought them into the Department of Corporate Communications to be able to consolidate the uh, resources and provide more focus on making sure the website is 
up to date and, and manageable and current. Uh, it's it's work to be able to keep a, a, a website that has the number of hits that we get on our website every year. We can't uh, let it go or it, it'll die, it'll become irrelevant. And uh, I think we've, as the report would suggest, we've done the internal readjustments without any additional staff to be able to focus more, uh, more of our focus uh, on staff time to make sure that it uh, maintains current and I think and you might be optimistic to get six or seven years. I think the industry average we heard is uh, an update at least five years. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, um, we're, uh, we think we're positioned to be able to get the most out of that uh, where we have it in the past. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'm taking then this internal document. I'll come to you so just to close out my thinking here. Um, the, uh, it's a project charter that you have, that document in a fashion. I would very much like to see it. And so I'm also going to invite staff to put forward a plan of continuing to keep us posted on progress and success and issues that come forward out of that. So monitoring and bringing some key, key milestone achievement points would be very helpful and assure us that what we're starting to do is right. Uh, Director, thank you. Um, the budget's a bit bigger than I would ideally like to see, but I guess that, that decision was made previously, so I can generally support what's being asked today. Um, just a couple questions. The first relates, I guess, to content management, and I may have missed it. Um, I'm just shuffling some paperwork, so my apologies if it has been addressed, but in terms of um, not technically astute staff being able to add their own content, is it going to have to go through a screening process through communications, or will it be fairly straightforward for people in various uh, departments to add and minorly adapt, at least the textual aspects of their own content? I think the director has it. The best answer I can give to that is if we assist uh, departments around making sure that one of the challenges you have in an organization, as in any organization, is that the content experts don't always um, plain language uh, information as, as best as they might. And, and so there is some tension around that, but the at the moment, content is not deployed without communications or IT generally agreeing, although we don't, other than a test of is that understandable, is it manageable, are we asking the right questions, that we're not uh, interested in slowing down deployment of content other than to say, how do we think about this in a way that makes sense um, to residents and to others? And, and there is healthy tension sometimes around uh, technical expertise, but but that's that's how things will be managed. And in terms of the technical side of how the actual software works, will it be something that won't require expertise in terms of adding new pages? So, because I know there's a tension in different organizations when you have there's a really strong gatekeeper function. Not so much, about, I agree entirely that there should be screening for plain language and readability and that kind of thing. But to ensure that you can have an easy to use interface where an ordinary staff member who's not adept in HTML and other types of computing code can basically build the draft page to the point where it needs final approval and to not basically have a log jam created at communications when parks or environmental services or planning has content that needs to go online. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the um, tests we met when we were selecting our new software was usability from a non-technical perspective. We had some folks who were content contributors testing out in a sandbox area what that software was like and making sure that it was intuitive for, for folks who weren't developers and, and that world. Okay. The last question I guess would have to do with this public to provide information, not just receive it from the CRD. And I would really hope that there can be some innovation in terms of allowing for that two-way communication. And I think we could see, see some real cost savings in the medium and long run. If there is a way, a pretty savvy interface for consultation that could save us having to do these 20 or 40 or $60,000 consultation initiatives on every single issue, if the site has sort of a, a sophisticated uh, and effective means for consulting on whatever issue the board or staff may determine in the future. One of, the, um, one of the challenges around consultation that we face, and, and we'll get to it with the province, is that the, the language around things like the solid waste management plan around consultation is actually 20, 25 years out of date. It talks about you shall conduct open houses. And it doesn't actually reference other tools in, in terms of meeting tests. And so that's definitely increased.
increasingly now when we do consultation, we um, we want to try and use those tools and make sure. But but I also want to say that um, you know we all we also are being careful around particularly um, particularly folk. There are some people who actually don't want to use the internet and we don't want to deal with technology and computers that way. And we also have to be sure that that we find ways to address. Uh, there are still some people who would like to see print documents. There are still some people who want to attend open houses and others. So we have to capture all those tools, but I think you're absolutely right in terms of um, the more we can drive those kind of consultations online, the less cost they are um, to the organization. Thank you. Just a few comments. Um, yeah, I think that's really good here because I agree the web isn't the be all and the end all. I think those face-to-face -face interactions are key. And I think web redesign can consume organizations and end up, for lack of a better word, a bit of a boondoggle. So I do hope that the core functions of the regional district can stay on track and while the team is focused on it, they will hopefully not have to consume the organization because at the end of the day it is just a website. Um, and uh, the other couple other comments, I think incorporating geography and place-based functions to the greatest extent possible. Uh, mapping can I think be a very effective way to help with navigation, particularly an organization is complex is the regional district and if we think of the local area directors and their citizens trying to access information particularly for them like some savvy map of the CRD that could bring you into the parks or bring you into the water supply system or bring you into recreational services in the electoral area um, would be sophisticated I think in the field of local government in terms of leading by example but also I think citizens could respond really well to it um, and I just, I'll leave it at that Thank you. Thank you. I, um, I want to congratulate you for taking this full weather warrant. Um, I have the recommendation in front of me, <coughs> and so I'd like that to brought to the table. Move the recommendation. <coughs> Second, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to speak to Director Isaac just a little bit. <coughs> he only mentioned the, the cost is a little bit more than what he had hoped for. Truth is, that's external cost. That doesn't speak to the staff time, the resources, and overheads that go with that. And my experience would say this was maybe just, just the pointy end of the wage. And the, the, what it is, it has to be, it has to be a leading soldier in our component of our, uh, uh, in our ability to communicate with our public. So the efficiency and effectiveness of the, of the tool itself will encourage and affect greatly how our internal costs operate. And Tech Kelly you would know all about that. So I'm looking forward to uh, progress reports, if I, if I may, because it's vitally important that goes beyond that. I'm going to call the question, if I may, on the, on the, on the recommendation. Is that your comfort? I see we are ready. May I have your pleasure, please? All those in favor? Let's carry it around the table. Thank you very much. Thank you, staff. <clears throat> I have procedures by law 3828. Staff, please. Thank you. Mr. Chair, the, um, uh, the report and the proposed bylaw before you uh, is the, again the culmination of about uh, six to eight months worth of, of work and discussions with uh, the board members. This is uh, I think the second time it's come back to the uh, committee. Um, there were a number of areas in the procedures bylaw that staff had been logging over the last, uh, those last six to eight months that needed updating to uh, respond to changes in terms of uh, the outdated sections of the bylaw. Um, I, I, I think the report is pretty clear around the major changes, but I will uh, touch on them very briefly. Uh, the, the major changes include a, around uh, an item on suspension of the rules of procedure, and that section allows for the board procedures bylaw to be temporarily suspended if the rules of procedure contained in the bylaw with a uh, two-thirds vote. So if there's uh, an interest in changing the length of time or shortening the length of time or doing something unique as a result of the circumstances, it's now, it would be possible with this bylaw with two-thirds vote. Um, Clarification of election procedures. If you can recall last December when we uh, had the election and there was uh, more than two people running, there was some confusion around the wording in our uh, bylaw around how we would manage and count votes in that. 
So uh, there is some uh, additional clauses or some clarification in the procedures file around the election of chair and vice chair. Um, delegations, uh, there's been uh, uh, a number of changes there. We've had large numbers of delegations and our bylaw wasn't necessarily always able to manage uh, some of the changes that we were seeing coming forward in the way people wanted to speak to the board and want to provide input. Um, so the, the new this recommended procedure bylaw provides uh, provisions for stating the delegations must appear in person first of all, a provision that has also been added to specify that the order of speakers will be based on the order of which the request is received. Uh, as you can imagine, there's all sorts of jockeying to be in a particular place regarding someone else's uh, presentation that they might know going on the agenda, so there's all sorts of whoever gets to identify where they want to be in the process last gets to win, so we think that it is only fair if we uh, provide a, a stipulation that it's in the, the order that you receive and people can't adjust that. Um, in addition, uh, the above, uh, there's been a clause added to restrict the substitution of delegations when a registered speaker is no longer able to attend. Um, and uh, other significant changes around delegations in order to manage a large number of delegations. Uh, a clause has been added granting the chair the authority to limit each address to a maximum of three minutes should six or more delegates register to speak on the same item. Uh, and video clips, uh, more and more we're seeing YouTube video clips being utilized and we want a clarification around the length of that video clip would be uh, the uh, registered as the portion allotted time for the uh, delegate to speak. And finally, um, a couple of final sections. Um, the ability to authorize the chair to determine where cameras can be situated uh, within the, uh, the chambers, and uh, then a number of minor housekeeping amendments. So those are the major ones, and, and Sonia is here. She can also add in details around that from a legal perspective. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, staff. Let me look around the table. Uh, Director Dijard, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm pleased to see most of these changes. There's one that, that uh, I have concern with, and um, I go back to uh, several of the sessions around the tanning bylaw and my memory on, on some of the confusion we had, and it's with respect to delegations. I have a concern that if we say someone must attend in person, we are in fact cutting out a group of people that cannot access us that way. Um, we, we have to look at how best we can be accessible to certain groups. Um, I remember there was a delegation for uh, tanning. The person was in hospital. And they felt strongly enough that they, they wanted to speak to us, that they sent somebody else and, and or did a video of themselves. There was some confusion around it, but I think if, if, if we absolutely say you must attend in person, we will not hear from those people. And, and that was a very important presentation in my view. It stands out. So, uh, you know, there are people that may be in care facilities, they may be not, not able to come here for whatever reason. We have to get around how, not, how, how to be able to include them in some way. Uh, and it may be that, the, that the, uh, we leave it at the discretion of the chair for unusual circumstances. Some clause in there that allows that unusual circumstance to occur. It wasn't many, but there were a few, and particularly around the tanning bylaw. So, thank you. Thank you. That's, I, I believe, important. I happen to be the chair for that event. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Director Rands, please. I agree to a certain extent about what uh, Director Desjard said. At least in so much as having a, an escape clause where that could happen, but I still like the idea of having to appear yourself. Um, the changes, virtually all the changes in here are good. They, uh, they bring us up to date. We do see sort of changing circumstances as we chair these meetings and, and have uh, heavy delegations. One thing that 
I'm a little concerned with uh, is, is the use of just straight videos. Uh, if a person wants to use a PowerPoint, that's fine. Um, if a person in absentia, as you described, uh, and can't make it, wants to have a video taken of them speaking, I, I could probably put up with that. But I really don't like the idea of when we have two hours of delegations of having to sit and watch a YouTube video. So that's, uh, I kind of hope that maybe there would be a little bit more control on the use of just straight videos drawn off the internet. I think that if a person wants to speak to us, there's certainly lots of avenues to communicate with us. We get the emails, we have phone calls, we have all of these things, and uh, I don't think it's an imposition to say, no, you can't pull a, a video off the internet. And I think it's listened to it in, uh, in the context of a two and a half hour series of delegations. Thank you, thank you, John. A turkey, young please. Um, thanks, Mr. Chairman. I, I agree with um, most of these changes I do. I do have a couple of concerns. With regard to the delegations, um, the only uh, concern I would have with a blanket permission to have substitutes is that we might get 20 people all indicating they can't come and all wanting to give their time to a single individual who would then have an hour to speak. Um, I think if, if we were to um, make it clear that substitution is for the case of um, individuals who are unable to attend for um, um, health or other compelling reasons, but, but that, they, uh, uh, that they would be substituted by a single individual speaking. Some, some, some constraint that would, um, would make sure that it is used it's a provision that's used uh, sparingly. Uh, with regard to the issue that Director Rands may uh, raise about the YouTubes, there's, there's a little bit of a contradiction. It, it, it says at one point that the problem with YouTubes and videos is that people um, aren't there to answer questions. And, and of course, but, but it, does, it does permit them. So I, I think we may have to think about that a little more uh, do we, uh, if, if we are concerned that people will be presenting videos in, instead of um, appearing personally, is, is that going to raise an issue? Do we, do we in fact want uh, a string of sort of third party videos being, being presented um, in place of, of people um, uh, expressing their own views? Uh, again, maybe maybe we need some kind of constraint on uh, video present presentations to being a um, a portion of the meeting. Um, I disagree with the elimination of the oath of allegiance. That's a a personal view. I don't I don't think if you're not prepared to make that, you shouldn't you shouldn't be here. But. Um, and with regard to the location of recording devices, I, I don't think that should be an ad hoc decision. I think we should we should decide what's permissible and what isn't, and, and um, that should be a board decision that we live with. I mean, where where can can somebody stand there there there? I mean, that's why why would you why would you make that decision ad hoc depending on whether the chair happens to uh, like the TV station that wants to record. Let's, let's figure out whether, where we want people to be and, uh, and that's, that's what it is. And we have, to, we have to put tape on the carpet, so be it. Um, the, 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 the most significant one I have the concern about is the suspension of, of rules. And I, I'm just not, I'm just not seeing what the, uh, what the um, concern is that we're, we're trying to address here, uh, there is a provision in Robert's rules for uh, somebody to move that move the question be called. If that's adopted, then, then the question is called. Um, I cannot see 
situations in which we would allow a non-member to debate on the floor here a motion. Um, uh, there is a provision for changing the agenda. If, if there's, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at the front page of the staff report, the very bottom of the page, uh, the reasons why we might want to suspend the rules, and I, and I guess I'm just not um, seeing a, a a reason for suspending them. It may be that uh, I can't recall just offhand if there's a even even a, even a motion to. Um, uh, to add an, a, a motion to the floor, I think there is a provision for doing that with a certain majority. But that that is one that I think uh, could be um, could be addressed in a rule. But but a, I, I'm just not seeing the need for a blanket suspension of rules procedure with as small a majority as, as two thirds. Um, we we've gone to a lot of trouble to have provisions about giving notice of motion and and. Uh, allowing people a uh, reasonable time to debate. And if we have a concern that we, with some of our rules, then maybe we should change them directly rather than having a provision to suspend them with only a two-thirds majority. Thank you, Chair. Director Eisenhower. I agree entirely with uh, Director Chair Young on the last point. Um, I think at some point, we, I'd like to see a motion on the table to strike out that particular clause. Um, I think we can accomplish what's being sought there through other means, which Chair Young has identified. Um, I also think the language around recording devices, particularly auto recording, has to be adapted. I think there's a number of reasons why members of the public may wish to record proceedings, usually because there's a particular issue that they're interested in. And we are a public body, and I think I don't really have a concern if someone wanted to have a tape recorder in their pocket in a public meeting and record the debate on. 622 West Coast Road and what's going to happen to that particular parcel of land without having to get prior approval or announce the fact uh, that they're recording that discussion. And it has no impact on the people around them. I think anything maybe beyond a handheld recording device or I guess a camcorder could potentially obstruct the view of someone in the gallery. So if we distinguish between audio and video, uh, members of the media who have larger recording Mr. Cleverly has a small handheld device that isn't unobtrusive to anyone in the public. So I think there's no need to regulate at all that kind of a device. Um, Frank Sanford from CFAX has an older, uh, maybe because it's for an audio station, it's a bigger device that maybe should be regulated and should be in a press gallery. And one option is we don't, now that the media is changing to include members of the alternative press or citizens journalists, we could remove restrictions around the press gallery. And if you saw it, to record with the more cumbersome device. You could simply be in that part of the room. And I agree, tape in different parts of the room could definitely specify where citizen or professional journalists can install their equipment. My last point, I think, has to do with closed meetings. And I would like to see one additional clause indicating that uh, the board will limit the use of in-camera, of closed meetings, to the greatest extent possible. And will disclose the nature of matters considered in camera to the greatest extent possible, respecting the requirements of the community charter. Um, so I don't know how the chair and staff would like to proceed with, I guess, more substantive amendments, but at some point I would like to see that amendment or an amendment along those lines considered. Thank you. Um, I think what I'd like to do is, um, is uh, welcome staff momentarily. But I want to check with uh, the director uh, the director from Sandwich, uh, Director Leonard, he is so familiar with so much that goes on around this table. Do you have any comments, sir? I just want to make sure that I've... You're, you're fine, thank you. Um, my, my notion then is to ask staff to respond and then we will go into, into a, a procedure. We could send it back to staff for incorporation of amendments uh, for those kinds of things or we could move by, by, by amendments directly and perhaps we'll just hear what staff's response is to some of these, these conversations. Um, I'd certainly like uh, Sonia to, uh, to respond to some of them, but uh, what I can say generally uh, that maybe I, I should have at the you know, onset was that um, when, when we were looking at the uh, amendments here, we didn't just identify the ones where we know we've had specific problems uh, in the past, but we also took a look at 
what was emerging in other procedural bylaws in places like the GBRD or the RDN and a number of municipalities to try and anticipate the sort of issues that we might see coming forward in the, in the future. And so provisions of a suspension of rules clause was one of those. And it, um, as much as there's a few examples in here, it, it's not a clause that is, we find is utilized very often. It's not something that would be there to, you know, you would see even once a year necessarily, but could see it as a way of responding to exactly the circumstance that uh, Director Desjardins identified at the beginning. If there was someone who wanted to be here but was in a care home and, and that might be, I would suspect would be uh, an opportunity to spend the rules to allow that video to be put forward where others' use of videos may uh, be less uh, desirable in terms of the process and the procedure. So it was for those sorts of examples that we, uh, that we identified it. Uh, the, just um, to uh, address finally the clause, I, I just wanted to make sh the, the board aware, and I think the, the committee and board are, uh, the staff are really conscious of the rules around uh, the provision of closed meetings. And uh, I don't know of any time, certainly in the last five years, where there's been any abuse of that. Um, and, but there is opportunities, I suppose, if the committee were to want to uh, deal with an item that legally could be in camera, um, not in camera, the board by resolution could do that. So I don't know if Sonia, you had other... It sounds like a suspension of rules. Um, <laughs> and we can't suspend the problem. <laughs> that's, the, that's the difference. Just uh, in addition to suspension of the rules, we do have in our procedure by already instances where we allow for that suspension, those suspension of rules. So, for instance, um, adding an item to the agenda, we allow. Um, we already have that provision in there. This clause that we've added is to capture those extraordinary circumstances where we haven't thought in advance, and it gives the board a little bit more flexibility to allow them to proceed with the business. The, the rules of procedure around the meeting, Ellie Meenan, who's a guru, uh, his, his words are, they're not to hinder the progress of a meeting, but to facilitate the progress of a meeting. So what we're trying to do is to put clauses in the procedure bylaw that allow the board to continue with, their, with the progress of the business and not delay that any more than, than is necessary. I'll just try to touch on some of the comments that some of the directors made as well. Um, with respect to the, to the use of videos um, as part of the delegation, so the intent is that it would be a person, a delegation has registered to speak in person to the board who wishes to use a YouTube video as part of their delegation submission. Um, so they will be in person, they will be present, so the board or committee will have an opportunity to ask any questions, or the chair will be able to ask them to turn the, the, the clip off if they feel that it's not appropriate, um, uh, an appropriate part of the delegation as part of their submission. Um, with respect to uh, substitutions, I'm not sure I understood uh, Chair Young's um, comment, I hope I did, but we, we are recommending that substitutions not be allowed for delegations that have registered to speak. The only exception is for those delegations that are registering as part of an organization. So for instance, you have Joe Smith, uh, who's the Vice President, requesting to appear on behalf of um, Bananas Unlimited. Um, Joe Smith is unable to attend, so Bananas Unlimited will send somebody else to, to appear before the board. So substitution is only in those particular instances. So you wouldn't have one person who's able to come to speak on behalf of 20 people. Um, and I think, and in terms of the language around the use of audio and video recording devices, I think the intent, and I can, I can massage the language a little bit, was to restrict the location of the video recording devices and not necessarily audio, video, uh, audio recording devices. And the intent around that is just to minimize any obstruction with the progress of the meeting. Again, these rules are in place to facilitate the progress of your meeting and to allow things to run as smoothly as possible. And, and the, what I might add to that, which I should have before, is um, as you know, we have 75 to 100 commissions within the CRD. Most of those commission bylaws require those commissions to follow our procedural bylaw. And we have had commissions who have had difficulty with video cameras and the location of video cameras in the room. So our intent in this file is to allow the chair to identify where those cameras are. Not necessarily for this room, because I think we can set the rules and the chair can set the rules and we can establish it. But it's for the commissions um, on Salt Spring or, or out in Juan de Fuca where there has been difficulties with uh, video cameras. And the size of the rooms tend to be very small. And uh, we have had chairs who have 
requested an ability to manage where they are situated in room. So that was the intent. We can tighten that up if you'd like. We can identify it as the commission chairs or something, but that was what our thinking was around the chair being allowed, because that would allow the chairs of the commissions to do the same. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go around the table. Yes. I was hoping, I was hoping to hear some comment uh, on the removal of the requirement for the oath of allegiance. Mm -hmm. um, we can certainly put that back in. It's been my experience um, that there have been some members of the board that have refused to sign the oath of allegiance. So the, le the legislation says that, that a board, the board must sign an oath of office, but they may sign an oath of allegiance. So we could easily put that back in, and those that choose not to sign the oath of allegiance just are not required to. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, they, they have not. They've signed their oath of office, which is a mandatory, but the oath of allegiance is uh, is not mandatory, and some have not signed. Can you come to you? I, I thought it was. Uh, my, my own uh, comments, uh, was certainly uh, thank you for the work you've done. Uh, I appreciate very much also the, the information that this sets the tone and situation for many of our subsidiary organizations and therefore must be broad and expensive enough to facilitate that. One of the anxieties I have is that the, the tradition of chairing around this, this, this organization is pretty strong. And most often, and the body, by the way, the engagement, sit down exactly, the engagement of respect to the, to the members is such that it is the conduct of business. And for the large part, we have been very successful in enjoying flexibility to the benefit so my sense is that um, uh, in the case of Tanning, for example, uh, we did o override, but that was to the betterment of the discussion and the, and the betterment of the, of the sense of public engagement in what we do. There's an awful lot of skill around this table. There is experience and so on. And so a dependence on, on procedures that are so tight is one that I am a bit uncomfortable with, where we sometimes need flexibilities to, to really engage people in a way that draws them into the solutions that we're striving to find. So that's my own personal bent, and I would hope that what we engage in here works to that better. Now we have some, some recommendations that come to the floor. Staff, we could ask you to go away and, 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 and bring that back. And, uh, and there are some tender spots there. For me, the oath, really, the, the oath needs to be back in. And that's my own personal view, and I, I leave that with there are those in the community that need to dig that through. Um, I, would, I would be there. The, the matter of, of, of video does have some challenges. There are those who have been suspicious of some organizations who, who come and to take clips and then string slices together that put reports out of context. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Happy to know the, the individual in the chamber. I think the inference there isn't fair. I believe there's another individual who may have been in this chamber and may be doing that. But I wasn't inferring this. Oh, just it was your gesture, Chair. No, 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 no. I was not inferring. This was... individual posts as is to YouTube oh, the no, meetings no, no, in their no, entirety. No, no, no. no. There, there was no inference about this person. I was just using oh, as an example okay, of, of, personal, of persons coming to conduct things for the, for the benefit of the other community. So, the, the reality is that at some point we are going to be faced with the RD undertaking full video of our proceedings. In that fashion, we would have a benchmark and an alternative to uh, the, 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 a placement that sets the facility, denies manipulation of, of, of uh, electronic record. And for that purpose, at some point, we're going to have to move ahead, in my opinion. So, I, I, I hear, I see hands going up all over the place. And I'm going to go to Chair Lennon first. I have to to Lennon. From what I gather is happening here, uh, staff are trying to um, yes. digest the suggestions and then come back with, a, with another draft. Uh, I just wonder if it's uh, reasonable to think that the committee would, would make a recommendation to the board and the board would just simply adopt or if indeed the 22 or 23 directors would start tinkering as yeah. well. Uh, because these 
bylaws, procedure bylaws, we take a lot of interest in. So I really wonder if you need to, at noon prior to a board meeting, have a committee goal where every director gets a shot at this while it's still in draft. Uh, so that this is just the first phase. Bring bring a draft to committee goal for an hour and, and let every board member have a shot at it. Rather than just us make a recommendation that they're going to adopt it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's, that's smart. Director Young, check in. Well, I, 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 you, you just got me a little worried with your remarks, Mr. Chairman, about uh, the media well, you, using, <laughs> using only part of our comments. That is universally the case. The media never reports the entire body of the comment on anything. It's physically impossible. They must necessarily select. And any idea that we have some kind of role in monitoring the components of what we say that the media uses is, is uh, not an objective, certainly not an objective of any rules of order uh, that we may be, may be wanting to put in place. And, and certainly that, that sort of reflects on one of the issues that was raised about uh, leading to the discretion of the chair, the location of media within the room, for example. Uh, I think, uh, okay, I accept that, uh, that we can't uh, maybe set rules within the rules of order for every room, uh, but I think in that case, rather than leaving it to the discretion of the chair, or totally, it should be made very clear that uh, to the maximum extent possible, uh, the media uh, is to be allowed access uh, to the proceedings, and that in any case, uh, equal access to all the media must be, uh, must be granted. Thank you, Chair. My intention was not to speak to our certified media. That was not what I was speaking. It was those private clips that were being assembled by private groups putting out YouTube uh, messages that were taking issues out of context in a way that allowed that to happen. And there was no, we didn't have, as I've seen it, on kind of one occasion, an ability to audit that and, and offer a counter to that. I was not speaking of the tradition, Mr. Chair, of the media, the registered media. So I didn't mean to get that impression. Director Rance, please. The, uh, there's a differentiation, I believe, between private media and the, uh, the organized media. Yeah. I mean, and I find that the organized media, for the most part, are relatively in 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 unintrusive. Yeah. And we know what to expect. We know that we are, as Director Young said, we're, that we're going to be getting things taken out of context, but that's something that we live with. The new manifestation is, is this sort of thing. And uh, I do believe that we need to be able to regulate that. I think that the, the uh, what's outlined in the procedure of bylaw is a good one. I find these three cameras intrusive, to be honest with you. If somebody wants to videotape this thing privately, fine, I don't give a damn, but set it up in the corner, not have the three cameras stuck around here. What happens when we have the organized media here? Are we going to have another half dozen cameras sitting around here? It's, uh, Recording for the public record is one thing. Uh, we are here, and we undertake an enormous amount of complex business around this table. And we need to be free to be able to debate it on its merits and uh, run the business the way it should be. And when you have cameras pointing at the back of your head, not knowing what they are, who they are, where they're going, it is a little bit distracting. So I really do appreciate the ability to be able to regulate that. Thank you. Director, Director Isaac, please. Yeah. Yeah. I think just to be fair, the reason there's three cameras is because any single one would be pointing at the back of someone's head if you look at the room. That camera's the back of your head, this is the back of my head, and that's the back of Director Bryce's head. So it's the logistics of the room, and I think Mr. Jason here has these cameras and because the CRD has not yet chosen to install its own cameras. Um, so I do take objection a little bit to the tone that he's somehow being an oppressive presence in this meeting. He's act actually to be applauded for filling a function that the CRD should be uh, providing to the public on its own and with its own resources. 
He's a civil servant who today doesn't have to be at work, but ordinarily he's taking time off work to provide a very valuable service to democratic governance in our community. Thank you. I have a speaking list. Director Price, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> On the issue of trying to regulate any electronic capturing of what happens around the board table here, the genie is out of the bottle on that. Yes. <laughs> Somebody can sit in the gallery with their iPhone and you can see yourself on YouTube that night. Every teacher knows that, every police officer knows that, every elected person should know that. So for us to try to uh, corral in something that is out there um, is preposterous. Uh, we can uh, put rules that might uh, count for these circumstances at this day with these three cameras or whatever. We're moving into a whole different uh, era where um, every elected body uh, will be uh, subject to uh, their voices and their image being captured and basically used as the person who has taken them sees fit and over time the public will simply have to learn themselves where they uh, can place their confidence. So I think uh, I'm not troubled by these uh, uh, cameras. I now don't even notice them. I did see, feel at first uh, they were a bit uh, unusual, but uh, I, I'd say the less control that we put on that, uh, the better. Thank you. I think I need to speak and clarify what I was trying to take. My sense was that until the CRD has full broadcast of its meetings, that there is no benchmark of option, of record, that says it was different than what was presented in some managed clip. Not, I'm not speaking of the formal, a formal media. Because I have seen harm done, I've seen harm done where streams were put together. And that was in, out of context, and it, and it went to YouTube. And there was no alternative vision that said, this was really what happened. So at some point, we as an RD are going to have to face the reality of broadcasting our, 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 our meetings. It's going to happen. And, and that will then genuinely reflect the current times. That was my only interest, was to have a benchmark that said there was an old, this was the reality of the meeting, and, this was, and, the, and the position being taken by some interest group was particularly different. That's all. So beyond that, I had no, no interest in that. Now, let me come back to uh, Director Desjardins speaking now. Let's speak Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my comment really just goes uh, ah. between that back and forth that the, the two of you have had. Um, I, I think that it's important that you know we allow the access. It, it's, there. it's there, and as you say, somebody can sit in the back of the room and tweet out little comments. Uh, so and so said this. So and so said that. But the difficulty with that is that unless you have the full context of the discussion, you don't, uh, as as Chair uh, Hill has said, have a really. Uh, um, full ability to understand how that that tweet fit in within the whole discussion. And uh, so what I feel is that we do need to have uh, that benchmark of a full recording in some way. Granted, most people will not go to it to use it, but uh, it, it will allow us uh, to have a format where we can say, uh, it should, should there be a reason to go back and have a better understanding that we can do it. Um, right now without that, uh, we, don't ha we don't have a defense or, or uh, the opportunity to clarify, and that's problematic. And I, I think we're in this growth uh, of social media, and it's wonderful, but we also have to have a recognition that uh, you know, a full discussion occurred. This is only a snapshot in time of that. And so, how do we pull that back into the full discussion? Thank you. Thank you. I just want to clarify what I'm saying. I'm not suggesting that we don't have cameras and, and individuals. I'm just saying don't intrude into the business of the meeting. And, and, it's, and it's, if we don't have some means of regulating the location, then ultimately there will be intrusion. Okay, I'm going to pull this together if I might. There have been a series of suggestions for 
for enhancement and tweaking to this. I really was caught by uh, Director Leonard's suggestion of a committee of the whole and bringing it together and letting all members have a shot and then we're benefiting across so that there's both not only the sending but the receiving around the table that works to the benefit of our, of our understanding and conduct of business. So I would, I would entertain a motion then, um, rather than the one that's the recommendation that's before us, to, uh, to refer this matter to staff with a further, uh, with a meeting of Committee of the Hall to be arranged to its meeting. Uh, please. Yeah. I, I would support that, Mr. Chairman. The one thing I would ask is that um, for the various issues for which people on which people have commented, could we have alternative wording presented um, by the staff uh, reflecting the different points of view uh, so that when we get to that meeting, um, people can have alternatives in front of them, both of which are properly worded in good form, and we can have votes, yes or no, to, to try and move through it reasonably expeditiously. Thank you. And I guess that would bring up for me, is this the time to refer or should we maybe ask staff to come with something for our October meeting based on these comments? Like, is, should this committee have been an initial sounding board or do we just want this as is to go to the committee of the whole? My gut feeling is maybe a slightly refined version that could come to this committee and we could choose to refer that directly to an October committee of the whole meeting. Um, just an idea there. Right. My, my conflict was moving more directly to the community of the whole. Not that, uh, but I, I believe that we could compress the calendar that way. But thank you. That's my own, my own sense. I'll, I'll move to refer to the community of the whole uh, with Chair Young's uh, comments. comments. Thank you. I have that seconded, please. Okay. Second. Discussion further? All those in favour? Thank you very much. Um, just for clarification, uh, I was thinking along the same lines as uh, Chair Young, um, but of course the, the uh, area of uncertainty for staff is if we miss one comment without a uh, suggested wording change, we could be sort of opening up. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So my preference would be we can certainly do that in consultation with the chair, and uh, between the chair and ourselves, we'll bring forward some alternatives for some of the key discussions that we've had here. Thank you. Okay. What would be the process for trying to move forward with the idea of webcast? Is that a standalone item to consider a future meeting? A standalone item. Okay. Well, I guess I would get just I won't get formal formal notice of motion, but I think we should look in the next one to two months at asking staff to report on uh, ways and means of moving forward with webcasting at the earliest possible opportunity. I hope it would, it would be an item in budget to staff please. Staff is already uh, looking at web streaming for uh, the new year, and that will be included in the, in the budget submission for 2015. Thank you. Thank you, Carson. Um, and now I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to conclude this item. Thank you. Second. I move and seconded. Discussion, please. Have you done? All those in favor? Thank you, Mike. Right, thank you. I have uh, under new business. The matter of the uh, competitions, CRD general managers, um, Chris has, a, has, a, has a, report, a verbal report. I've been kept apprised of the changes that are happening, but Chris, it would be appropriate for you to, to tell us with the discussions and the status of the various uh, proceed, procedures that are in play. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so, as you are aware, we have. Uh, I mean, two of our general managers uh, who have uh, retired or moved on to different things uh, within our organization. And um, uh, we uh, are setting up the selection process uh, for those two roles. I uh, wanted to keep you up to date on where we are with that. Um, we have gone out to an RFP for an executive search firm uh, for those two roles, uh, anticipating that we're going to have uh, significant interest um, and, and very broad interest for the two roles. The uh, uh, RFP has closed and we have uh, a preferred proponent, uh, which we'll be talking to today um, about the process as we move forward. Uh, the, um, 
typically with any of our general manager roles, recognizing that under our uh, exempt bylaw, they are officers of the board and require board uh, appointment. Uh, we uh, will typically set up a selection committee uh, that will include uh, the uh, board chair or representative, uh, the finance and corporate services committee chair, the chair of the committee of which the general manager uh, uh, typically reports through, uh, the CAO, myself, and, and frequently another general manager uh, to look at a very broad range of uh, skill sets that we're looking for the role. Uh, the uh, executive search firm uh, uh, has indicated that they are looking at about a nine to 12 week process. Uh, as I say, we're gonna get that process started uh, as of two o'clock today, actually. Um, so a, uh, about a nine to 12 week process. The majority of that time is spent in the recruitment and the search and the short listing of individuals so that uh, when we get to the selection committee uh, work, uh, we have the top notch candidates for the committee to look at. Uh, the goal will be then, uh, given that period of time, that we likely would be in a position to uh, to bring forward, for the committees to bring forward their preferred candidate to the December board meeting uh, for appointment. And then typically, depending on where that individual is, they will have to provide some notice. So in terms of the uh, general manager of Parks and Community Services, um, uh, we're looking at a selection committee uh, that will include um, the uh, uh, individuals that I, I talked to with uh, Director Bryce uh, being the uh, chair of the Parks Committee and in the Integrated Water Services would ensure that the uh, chair of the Regional Water Supply as well as the chair of the Wanda Fuga Distribution um, uh, Committee are involved in the selection process. So uh, certainly uh, if you have any questions, um, I'm more than happy to answer those for you, but I, I think we're well on the way. Directors Rands and Directors Iron Pistol, for instance. In the, in the case of water, you have an acting, a person filling an acting role. Why wouldn't we wait for a while on that and we'll see how that person uh, fulfills that role? We did that years ago with uh, Lloyd Rush, and I don't think anyone would argue that we didn't get the right guy with him. That was been phenomenal. And uh, we didn't go on a search. We gave him an opportunity. We should probably discuss that in camera. That would be a matter of in camera, thank you. That the actual uh, decision making process, I think we've got, we've got here. I think what we'll do is take the staff and incorporate that, that those notions inside that, and then re we, we can have an off, an, an off table discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Director Ben has it. Yeah, um, remembering we're not in camera. Yes. No, I have a very similar question, and I don't think the off table would be on the table, but in a legitimately close yes. meeting, because um, I think there are a lot of arguments for the, the health of the organization and the morale of the workforce to look at internal hires, if at all possible. So I want to contribute to that discussion as well. Yes. For, for the benefit, I have not seen that the candidacy list would not incorporate anybody who is already within, within the terms of the employment of the organization. Thank you. Um, I'll take a motion to receive the verbal report. For the record, thank you. Move second. That's a great country, right? Okay. okay. And now I'm moving into uh, the motion to move into camera. Oh, motion to close meeting in accordance with the community charter. Da da da. The receipt of advice of the system. My privilege and for communication of necessary to purpose of that too. Thank you. Oh, 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 right yes. oh, I was just going to say, and also to discuss the personnel matter, yeah. which we just flagged. Yeah. We'll incorporate that as a part of the 